Hello, and welcome to this edition of Hard Fire. I'm Gary Popkin, the producer of Hard Fire, and your host for this evening. It's midsummer of 2007, and this fall on Election Day, November of 2007, we'll have on the ballot some judges and possibly a voter initiative to amend the New York City Charter. So here with us to uh, discuss this possible voter initiative and this possible amendment to the city charter is Les Jameson of the Civic Empowerment Network. Hello, Les. How are you? Doing great, Gary. Thanks for having me. Um, will you uh, describe your proposed voter initiative? Yes. Uh, what this is is a desire to get on the ballot an option for New York City voters to choose for a new independent investigation of the events of 9-11 and along with that is a proposal to uh, create an office of New York City Attorney General uh, which is an office that would be there to support the investigation uh, in its legal uh, procedures and uh, which I'm sure that would be formidable and uh, also to act on behalf of uh, groups of New Yorkers on all kinds of domestic and uh, civil issues. Oh, so this will get beyond this. This Office of Attorney General will get mm -hmm. beyond the. Uh, will go beyond the 9/11. Uh, mm -hmm. In uh, this your new 9/11 investigation. Why do we need another investigation into 9/11? Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Gary, and it's very important for uh, every American to understand this. Uh, after the events of 9/11. It took 14 months before the U.S. government, the Bush administration, would even authorize an investigation. This is highly unusual. Under any other uh, catastrophic event in the history of U the United States, uh, within days, uh, official investigations, large-scale investigations, uh, were en enacted. Uh, at the, the Challenger uh, accident, that uh, when the, uh, the space shuttle fell out of the sky into uh, Texas and those, those states, I think it was a matter of four days. There was a huge investigation costing many millions of dollars. Uh, it took 14 months, and it was only through the hard, hard, hard uh, lobbying of 9-11 victims' families and some survivors going to Washington and pleading, knocking on doors, uh, and just building the political heat uh, for this administration did it finally come to pass. And uh what um, uh, what is mm -hmm. what is your suspicion about mm -hmm. why the uh, why the investigation took so long to get going? There uh, was an awful lot that this administration does not want known. For instance, uh, uh, once they did get the investigation uh, going, okay, once it was finally authorized, did you know that uh, Bush and Cheney went to Tom Daschle, who was uh, I believe um, Speaker of the House at the time and also Patrick Leahy and told them to limit the investigation. They underfunded it, they only appropriated three million dollars and then later another uh, eleven million dollars. Now in comparison to the investigation into the Clinton whitewash and Monica Gate uh, incident uh, which was uh, I believe sixty million dollars, you know, this is a paltry amount for uh, to investigate the events that were the most apocalyptic uh, incident that ever happened on U.S. Yes, soil. Well, I'll, I'll be interested to get to the uh, cost, so these are all very, cost of a proper investigation. Yeah, yeah. But um, can you tell yeah. us? Um, can you tell us uh, first mm. how this um, uh, this ballot initiative mm -hmm. uh, will get onto the ballot and sure. exactly uh, what it proposes to do? Great. Yes, uh, with petition signatures numbering thirty thousand of New York City voters in any of the five boroughs. Um, this will then go before City Council, and City Council will then either approve or reject. And if they do reject it, uh, we can go back to the people for another 15,000, which would then override their rejection. And also the mayor, if he wanted to, he could step in and block this. Well, but, what's the time frame? What is the, what is the time frame of this uh -huh. first round of petitioning, the mm -hmm. City Council approval, the second round of petitioning? It has to get through, um, if we were going to make the November 6th ballot, it's got to get through to the Board of Elections by 60 days prior, so that would be September the 7th, and uh, today's the 24th, so we are in a very tight time, time this frame. This is the, the second round of petitioning has to get to the Board of Elections by 
September, you right, say? Right, right. Now, mm -hmm. now if the, with the first round, going for the 30000 the city council, like I said, could approve it, maybe make a few changes here and there. And uh, we think that the pressure would be for them to approve it. I mean, what, all we are saying is that the events of 9-11 needs to be uh, reinvestigated, re-examined, uh, impartially by an independent body of people as opposed to government appointed. And uh, we're not making assertions or claims. All we're saying is let's get another true, in, but this time an independent investigation. Okay, now how, um, how is this going to be uh, an independent investigation? Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about how, about sure. the 9-11 Commission. Uh, in what way was that not independent? Yes, yes. that was uh, very uh, much a government inside operation, okay? Uh, just about everybody there on, on that commission had conflicts of interest. The executive director was a man named Philip Zelikow. Philip Zelikow is basically a Bush appointee. Uh, he was part of the uh, Bush one government uh, administration, and then he was part of the Bush two transition team. He, uh, when, when in uh, 2000, when George W. came into power, uh, he co-wrote a book with Condoleezza Rice, and. Uh, he was, as the executive director, he oversaw all the information that came in and what came out. So uh, he was very much a uh, director of, of, of this whole uh, operation. Then Keene and Hamilton, see, we're told that it was bipartisan because you had four Republicans, you had four Democrats. Uh, but understand this, there was a vacancy. Uh, Max Cleland was basically booted out. You know what happened? Uh, the senator from Georgia, he's the one who is a Vietnam vet, lost three limbs uh, in Vietnam, and uh, is as patriotic as anybody could possibly imagine. He made a statement uh, when a report was issued where 28 pages were blacked out, redacted. And he says, the American people, because he, he saw what was on there, he said, the American people are getting scammed. The government knows a lot more uh, about 9-11, knew a lot more uh, had a lot more foreknowledge than they let on. So he was then removed and given a job on the Export-Import Bank. So there was a vacancy there. And the families, 9-11 families, wanted to place Kristen Breitweiser, one of the uh, uh, Jersey widows who has a law degree, in that, um, that position. And instead, the government put in uh, John Kerry. So they, the government controlled every aspect of, of this. And uh, they okay. allowed things like, for instance, yeah. Bush and Cheney, when it came time for them to testify, they allowed them to testify only in secret, without being under oath. Only a few commissioners could be in the room. They couldn't take any notes. And that was uh, considered um, allowable. Mm -hmm. so. Now, how is your commission going to be better? Yes, we ha have a, a mandate for this commission to conduct a comprehensive, fact-driven investigation that follows the evidence wherever it leads. That means looking at every scenario, considering it fully, which uh, the official government did not do, the, uh, the official investigation. All it did was to, um, uh, to echo, to restate the government's official position. This is going to look at all scenarios, and uh, the people, uh, the commissioners that we have uh, selected, I'd like to name. Uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, Apollo 14 astronaut. He's one of the men who wa uh, walked on the moon and is a physicist by training. Uh, Dr. William Pepper, international attorney. Uh, he's the man who wrote a book called Act of State. He uh, led a new trial on the uh, Martin Luther King assassination. Uh, he was hired by the King family and uh, uh, Basically, he found that it was not James Earl Ray, and he brought forth 70-plus new witnesses. Uh, and uh, this was known around the world, but was not covered here in the United States. Uh, Lincoln Chafee, former Republican senator from, uh, from Rhode Island. Lori Van Auken, one of the Jersey widows. And, um, Thomas Gumbleton, a Roman Catholic bishop. Ed Asner, actor, activist, and former uh, president of the Screen Actors Guild. And finally, a Mohawk tribal member by the name of Splitting the Sky, or Daka Jawea. And uh, we're also talking to two Nobel Prize, Nobel Peace Prize laureates uh, for, for additional positions here. So, now, have all of these people accepted your offer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, how was this, uh, this 
um, commission drawn up? Uh, mm -hmm. who, uh, who selected these members and what was the yeah. rationale? Yeah, uh, uh, a team of people and uh, especially through the leadership uh, of uh, Dr. Uh, William Pepper who has conducted a, a, a great investigation, a, a large-scale investigation, knows what a commission is about. He uh, uh, was the one to suggest the, the rationale. Also, uh, a great researcher and author by the name of David Ray Griffin uh, had input on this. He's a theologian by background, and he's written four or five books now on the events of 9-11 after his whole career as a theologian. And uh, that, so the rationale was to, to try and get as many um, unaffiliated people uh, who would be deemed impartial and neutral, who would be perfect for con just conducting an investigation, holding hearings, and uh, evaluating the evidence that researchers and teams... Okay, now I don't know forth. whether these people are impartial. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what is... Um, mm -hmm. No, I know that you uh, disagree with mm -hmm. the results of the 9-11 Commission, mm -hmm. and um, you also uh, have found fault with their procedures, starting with the, uh, with the mm -hmm. late um, initiation of mm -hmm. the investigation mm -hmm. and then procedures during the investigation. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do these members, these proposed members of the New York City 9-11 Commission, mm -hmm. do they come to the Commission, do they come to their job uh, with some preconceived ideas about mm -hmm. uh, the truth or falsity of the 9-11 uh, Commission report? Do they have some ideas about what happened or what didn't happen? There are a couple uh, on here. Let's see. Oh, Ralph Showman. I don't know if I mentioned him. He, he was uh, uh, the executive director of the Bertrand Russell Commission, a longtime investigator and historian, and he's uh, given in-depth research to this, and uh, he comes to the same conclusion that there's been a massive cover-up. And, and the thing is, anybody who has studied this a li at least a little bit has serious questions and, uh, uh, and, and, and can list several things that point to the implausibility of the government's official account saying that 9-11 was uh, the result of uh, this plot by 19 young angry Arabs with box cutters who basically don't know how to fly other than on simulators and uh, one of them even flunked his Cessna train. He couldn't fly a single engine plane. Uh, and yet this team of, uh, of guys just shattered our multi-trillion dollar defense system, uh, military and uh, intelligence apparatus, and just caught everybody by surprise. Nobody knew, had any clue. That's, that's what we are asked to accept. And so uh, anybody who's given just a little bit of thought has got to have some questions about uh, that official story. So uh, uh, now this, the mandate is again is to conduct a full fact-driven investigation. So if if the government's uh, official story is right, we want to at least arrive at that conclusion through uh, a comprehensive investigation, uh, which did not happen. Now there is another angle that I'm interested in. Mm. Uh, in the, I, I'm interested in having investigated. Mm. Um, uh, let us uh, assume that the uh, that the government's story is correct. Uh, the government's explanation of why the buildings fell, for example, uh, is correct. Um, what I'm interested in finding out is uh, what accounts for the the massive failure of our so-called uh, trillion-dollar um, intelligence community. Um, where were the police? Where were the FBI? Where was the FBI? Where was the CIA? Why weren't they following up every lead? Um, for mm -hmm. example, um, I understand that the flight school information came to the attention of the authorities. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they investigate what that was all about? Why didn't they track down emails or yeah. telephone calls? Did well, I say that already? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll add to that. Why didn't, after uh, the events of 9-11, uh, the authorities tracked down uh, people who are connected to a think tank, a right wing, ultra right wing think tank in Washington called the Project for a New American Century that stated in order to carry out their agenda for uh, Pax Americana, for, for full spectrum dominance, that uh, it would require a military transformation, that the American people would not support this absent a catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. 
why was that not investigated? Because we have uh, literally in black and white the, the blueprint for what occurred on 9-11 and that has occurred ever since with the uh, 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 invasions that we are involved with as a country, also with the, the passage of, of, of uh, legislation that, that has undermined and uh, uh, that has basically been assault on uh, civil liberties and the Patriot Act just six weeks after 9-11. Why, why haven't these things been truly investigated? Okay, well, mm. um, uh, you, you have, uh, you, you have uh, evaded my, my, uh, the issue that I wish to bring up, and that is um, assuming, mm. assuming that the, the story is true, assuming no. that the findings of the 9-11 Commission is true, uh, why have no heads rolled? Mm -hmm. Why has nobody been fired? Why yeah. has nobody been reprimanded even right. for failure to do their job? Why have no police or FBI or CIA uh, or others uh, or Air Force people, um, all, of the, all of the apparent failures, mm -hmm. apparently so much failure was needed to allow this to happen, why has nobody been called to account? Is your commission going to investigate Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. no one has been called to account for this massive I, failure yeah, 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 of our trillion-dollar defense? That's a very, very uh, important set of issues that you raise, Gary, because you would think that you'd want accountability in your government. We pay, uh, you know, huge taxes here to have a functional government that's supposed to be the uh, uh, the model for the world, right? And yet, this massive. Uh, 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 Situation of, of of blocked attempts to uh, to send warnings to to uh, uh, to to shed light on things that were happening in these flight schools, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, attempts by FBI agents, for instance, uh, who tried to warn attorney, a Republican attorney David Shippers, that these uh, events were going to happen. Um, that th these have not been taken into account. People have not held been held accountable. And f further than that, there was three FBI agents, uh, uh, Marion, so Spike Bowman, uh, David Frasca, and Michael Maltby, were given raises, were promoted. And these were the ones that were part of the uh, operation where they were receiving information on Zacharias Musawi. And one of those three actually uh, blocked 70 memos that were sent up through the chain of command by a field agent by the name of Harry Samet, S-A-M-I-T. And one of them was even altered. And yet these three guys uh, were promoted. So this right, is what highly is, what suspicious. Is, what is going to be the, um, the power mm -hmm. of this commission? The, for example, the uh, subpoena power. Mm -hmm. um, how is that going to be arranged? This uh, is actually built into the uh, petition. And uh, if I could just you know, I've had that lead into a few uh, specifics about the petition. It does call for subpoena power. Uh, it's built in, and the petition, if you go to our website, you can download this. Uh, it's nyc911initiative.org, uh, and you read through the website in about 10, 15 minutes. Read the uh, in, uh, frequently asked questions, especially in the, in the instructions. You can download this, fill it out, and mail it in. And uh, it's four pages long, and the reason why is because it's, it would actually become a, a state statute, a, I'm sorry, a city statute if it passes, and uh, it's required to have all the details in there. And uh, yeah, this would have subpoena power and uh, would be funded uh, through either private donations or a combination of private donations and uh, funds raised through the uh, uh, actions of the Attorney General. Uh, uh, yes, I was going to ask you mm -hmm. um, how much a proper investigation ought to cost, since mm -hmm. you thought that the 9-11 Commission didn't spend enough of our money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we're calling for uh, 10 million a year. Okay, and uh, I think... And how many years is it going I, to take? I, yeah, to tell you the truth, since there's been so much research done in these uh, uh, five and a half, almost six years, uh, I, we think 12 to, to uh, 18 months would be sufficient. And uh, beyond that, there might be court proceedings and appeals, things of that nature. But the bulk of it could take place easily, I'd say, in, in 12 to, to 18 months. Okay, like that. and that money is going to come from where? So we're talking about mm -hmm. 10 to 15 million dollars, you mm -hmm. estimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that money is going to come from where? Should I hold on to my wallet? No, private donations and uh, uh, 
the attorney general, when, when Elliot Spitzer was attorney general, you know, he raised uh, over $2 billion just through uh, legal proceedings uh, against corporations that uh, were guilty of fraudulent practices against the uh, citizens of New York. $2.3 billion, there's, there's a lot of money out there, and, and much of that money could also be going into the coffers of New York City. And with a New York City Attorney General, that would actually occur, very likely. Okay, and now you want the, uh, the office, do I understand that you want the office of the Attorney General mm -hmm. to survive the functioning of the commission of this uh, New York I, City 9-11 I'm, gl I'm glad you asked that. Uh, the answer is it would only be for the duration of the investigation and could be extended then as a separate statute uh, if, if the people of New York City chose to. Okay, now can you tell us mm -hmm. how the mayor can mm -hmm. block this initiative after all your work, yeah. these tens of thousands of signatures and so on, how does the uh, mayor go about preventing your initiative from appearing on the ballot? Yeah, as we understand, the mayor has the prerogative to block any ballot initiative. Now, the whole process or the whole concept of a ballot initiative, Gary, is to give the, the citizens of New York a, a role in their own governance because it's us creating a topic that we get, get the petition signatures, that we, we get uh, uh, the, the support from the grassroots. This is government from bottom up as opposed from top down. And we place it on the ballot, and even after all that, the, the uh, city council first, and then the mayor could come in and block it. And I believe this happened, I was told this actually happened uh, several years ago. Uh, the uh, teachers union passed a petition after they'd collected over 100,000 petition signatures to, uh, all, they, all they were asking for is a study into classroom size, the size of classrooms and the mayor uh, blocked that. So this is just uh, the mayor's prerogative. It's uh, built in there. And the way we get around that, I think, is we need to uh, create a, a mass, a massive uh, clamor for what this is calling for, a true independent reinvestigation of the events of 9-11 because uh, it's impacted our lives. It's impacted the world. Uh, also, I want to bring in the, the topic of uh, the environmental fallout. Uh, as uh, we've, we've seen, a lot of people, thousands of people have been sickened, you know, very seriously through having uh, been there as a first responder after the events of 9-11, uh, for search and rescue, uh, people who just responded to the call of duty uh, with that catastrophe, uh, were there breathing the air and were told that uh, the air was safe to breathe, uh, were given inadequate equipment in inadequate training, and it was just uh, absolute chaos, absolute breakdown, and many people have died already, and a lot more will die. Uh, people are uh, uh, turning up with cancers. And, and does your initiative uh, I include within its scope an investigation into uh, this aspect? Yes, yes, of the uh, issue? yes. I th we think it's very serious. It's got to be addressed. It has not been sufficiently addressed, and uh, uh, w the way we kind of uh, uh, position it is that we want to pursue uh, remedies. Let me say, I have to word this just right well, because... Well, what about, what, what does, mm -hmm. what does your, your, uh, what does your uh, ballot initiative say mm -hmm. about the scope? Mm -hmm. can, can you briefly, we, we have a few minutes left, mm -hmm. can you briefly tell me okay. something about the scope of the authority of sure. this commission? Yeah, I, I have it right here. Oh, excellent. So the, the duty of the commission will be to conduct a comprehensive, fact-driven investigation and follow the evidence wherever it leads. The commission will call upon expert witnesses from all related fields with the goal of producing a report revealing how the events of 9-11 occurred and who was responsible. Additionally, the commission will focus on securing health, financial, and legal remedies for the thousands of people adversely affected by 9-11 now and in the future who are currently being denied desperately needed services. So mm -hmm. we do want to include okay, that. So that um, yes. And again, uh, we urge people to go to our website, nyc911initiative.org, uh, download the petition, and we ask you to do this uh, very soon, like today. Uh, also, for those who do not have Internet access, you can call a hotline number and leave your uh, name and address, and we'll mail you the petition. And that hotline number is 646 
537-1755. Okay, now, um, can, um, can uh, citizens help, uh, how can citizens help this effort? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, a couple of ways. What are, what are some of the jobs you need mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. people to do right now? Right now, we do need help in collecting signatures. We're uh, out there on the streets every weekend. Uh, we could use uh, help out there with our pads of signatures, uh, just approaching the New York City voters. And they can call that telephone number. They can call the phone and, number or, um, or go to our volunteer. website. Yep. Okay, the or, weather is still nice. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, also, there's a guest book on our website. And we want to urge everybody to sign into our guest book. That way we can mm -hmm. be uh, uh, in, in touch and give everybody uh, updates and development. You know, there were, uh, in my memory, there was only one mm -hmm. ballot initiative that made it onto the ballot that the mayor did not block. Mm -hmm. And that was the first one. That was when uh, voter initiatives were first opened up. Uh, and that was the term limits. Mm -hmm. And the mayor was asleep at the switch didn't block that initiative, and uh, the voters passed it. And mm. since then, of course, the mayor has been on his toes, his mm. respective toes, mm. and uh, no uh, initiatives have sure. gotten onto yeah. the ballot. Yeah. The, uh, the mayor sets up a uh, charter commission, mm. ch a charter revision commission, and puts his own yes. initiatives yes. on. Well, this is why we, as New York City voters, have to be on our toes. Uh, if we want to uh, uh, recreate the, the political process. We can. We can do it. And this is a uh, vehicle to do that. I, uh, again, it's literally uh, government from the bottom up uh, where we can have a role in, in uh, creating the reality of the political uh, nature, the political processes okay, that, that we well, live under. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for explaining Great. this all to our viewers. And um, our viewers, uh, if you're interested, of course, you can get in touch with, uh, with Les and uh, his Civic Empowerment Network. Uh, please join us next week for another edition of Hot Fire. I'm Gary Poplin. Hardfire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York.